G'day and welcome back to 256 Shades of Grey. Today we're turning down the silly and turning up the compassion as we discuss one of the hardest things about our profession, that is breaking bad news to patients. As part of our duties, we're in the position to deliver some very exciting news to expectant parents. However, this privilege also comes with a much more difficult task. Our job can actually be the best job in the world or it can be the worst job in the world. So join us as we open up and talk about loss, communication, compassion and care. trimester patient in for query dating, the first thing I say to them before I put the transducer on them or anything, I let them know that not all pregnancies go according to plan and are they okay if I tell them whether it's good news or bad news? 99.9% .9 of people say yes please tell us that's why we're here. I think one of the vital things to do is acknowledge that they're anxious especially if they've had some bleeding because they're worried whether there's a miscarriage or what's going on in there. So I always say, look, I know you're anxious. I want to let you know what's happening as soon as I can. But before I even scan them, I'm going to tell them that I might not be able to see everything as well as I need transabdominally. And we might need to do a transvaginal ultrasound. So I'll go through the procedure about the transvaginal ultrasound, let them know what's involved there, ask about whether they're allergic to latex, just so that if we get to that part of the scan, we don't have to faff around doing other things, that we know we can just go straight to the transvaginal imaging. And before I turn any monitor on, I have a look and make sure that there's a fetal heartbeat or at least what appears to be a normal early pregnancy. And the same goes for every trimester of pregnancy. That monitor doesn't go on until I've seen a heartbeat and a head and Every, you know, sort of through in that quick scan through. So I'll say to the patient, I'm going to have a quick look and then I'll start talking to you about everything. And if I'm quiet, I'm not worried, I'm just focused, concentrating on everything. And then I'll eventually, once I've seen what I need to see, the TV will go on and I'll explain everything to you. And I get Linda Frowny face too sometimes, that's when I'm concentrating. That's Linda Frowny face. So the spiel that I say when I get patients in is much the same as, as what Linda said. Very important to make sure that we can reduce the levels of anxiety that the most expected parents have, especially first pregnancy doesn't really change, second, third, fourth, one hundredth, it's all the same. Everyone's a bit nervous so we try to keep it um, as simple and as um, compassionate as we can, make sure we're caring as much as we can. Breaking bad news doesn't necessarily have to be within the first trimester. Sadly, it can occur within the second trimester, even the third trimester. Um, so we have to be aware that no matter when this occurs, it's always heartbreaking and it's always life-changing for them, no matter how many times we've seen it. This can be their first time that any of this has happened. If the couple are together, then um, that's great because they've got the, the support and leave them alone to come to terms with it if you can and allow them to leave via an exit that isn't through the main waiting room if that's possible as well. And if you need to ring their referring doctor, you can tell them what their next step is, whether to go back to their doctor straight away or if their specialist wants to see them that afternoon. So you've got to just leave other patients waiting if you have to because this, this couple or this patient is the most important thing at that time. And be prepared to reach out to them. If there's the lady is by herself, I've often said to them when they're leaving the room, look, do you want a hug? And honestly, most of them would just like a little hug because they feel lost. They're completely at odds with everything that they thought was going to happen when they came in to see you. We have to be prepared to show that we have feelings and that we're humans as well. Yeah. And people just want hugs. Very much so. So before we tell anyone that this is a non-progressing pregnancy, there are a lot of criteria that we have to check first. These can all be looked up through ASM. Your department might have its own protocol too, so check with your department's protocol in this. Uh, as per the guidelines by ASM, pregnancy failure can be diagnosed under either or both of the following circumstances. 
So if the mean sac diameter is over 25 millimeters, and there's no live fetus seen within the gestational sac. Uh, using the criteria of the crown to rump length, if there is a fetal pole measuring over seven millimeters without any fetal heart movements, uh, this can be classed as a pregnancy failure. Um, you must sit on that little fetal pole for over 30 seconds and make sure you're watching the area where you think the heart would be. Um, just to double check that there is definitely no heart movements. Do a cine loop through it so you can prove it. Yeah. Put colour on. All of the things that you can check, double check, triple check, before you are 100% and before you deliver news to somebody. As we said, this is not a time to be guessing. Yeah, uh, leave your ego out of it. If you're not sure, go and get your supervisor, go and get another sonographer, yep. go and get a radiologist. There are times when we really aren't sure what's going on. This can happen whether it's really, really early pregnancy, pregnancy of unknown location, an ectopic, patients unsure of dates, everyone's a bit confused, they haven't had their blood test yet. At this point, it ends up a grey area. I think if you share that grey area with the patient, yeah. I'll, I'll tell them exactly, I'll, I'll say, look, you know, it looks like about a five week pregnancy, but we don't always see the heartbeat at that stage, yep. so we, we need to get another beta HCG reading, seeing whether those levels are going up or not. Just talk to them, just gauge their feelings. Each yep. person, you'll get the vibes off them as to how much you need to tell them. But it is difficult as a, a new sonographer to gauge those, what, how far you should go, really, talking yeah. to your patient. At the end of the day, like we said, if you're uncomfortable or you're in a situation where you're not sure what to say, get your supervisor. It's better for the patient, it's better for you if you're not sitting there faffing around trying to figure out what to say yeah. and making the whole situation a lot more uncomfortable. Because you might have sweat trickling down the back of your neck because believe me it's an awful time and it doesn't get any better no matter how long you've been doing this job, it's not easy. And you, you'll come out of that room after you've looked after your patient and you'll need a strong cup of coffee or something stronger. Something a lot stronger sometimes. A lot stronger. Mm, definitely. So Linda and I were just discussing that we can give an example now of what we would say if we're delivering bad news to a patient. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's the same one that we're going to give every time. It's dependent on the patient, it's dependent on the environment, how many people are in the room, what their past history is. Um, I usually try to make sure that it's clear, uh, but it's also in a very caring and loving way that I tell them. At this stage we should be able to see a heartbeat and I can't see a heartbeat. Um, I usually offer them some words of comfort, give them some space if they need it, some tissues and a hug, and let them have their time to grieve for the moment and then, and then head on out. Can we have some panda videos or something now? Because I'm a bit... <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, put some pandas on. Here's some pandas. <laughs>as sonographers we can see sometimes up to 20 patients 20 different lives 20 different personalities and 20 different situations that we're very involved with as much as we need to care for others we also need to care for ourselves and look after our own well-being as a dear friend once said to me we have to put on our own oxygen mask before we help others around us thank you for joining us again hopefully you learned something and gained a bit of a deeper understanding as to what happens behind closed doors so once again, let's raise those probes and cheers to sonography. Did I get it right this time? <laughs> yeah, you got it right. So like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Okay, with a lighter subject, hopefully. Yes. Bye. Bye.